right, piss and vinegar day 120, or fucking definitely not 121, uh, 72, something like that. I'll, I'll be honest, I'm not super focused on piss and vinegar right now. I'm not super fi- focused on my training. There's a lot going on due to the bicep curl, and it's just, it's not really the forefront right now. But I'll do my best to do my best at piss and vinegar. Uh, especially this leg day, but it all, all, all of it's just very hard to really get into it right now. I'm, I'm so limited by so many things. But um, yeah, I did a voice, a live narration, but it was goddamn, was I fucking boring. So I'm just going to do a post narration and try to make it a bit more interesting. So I was doing squats uh, with a safety squat bar and my squats unbelievably weak because my legs are strong, but my glute activation my hip flexion and ankle mobility and all this stuff is just not there and now that i've got this bicep tear i'm going to be spending a lot of time trying to focus on getting my body as absolutely functional as possible for when i do get back into piss and vinegar full swing i can really give it my all and not have limitations and Right now, the squat, you know, like at a certain joint angle, if I do say box squats and I don't, with box squats, the lower back and hip mobility is not really an issue. And I can really output as much force as possible and do like 160 kilos. But it's kind of just, it's only good for my ego. It's not really the best squat, the box squat, as far as hypertrophy goes, nor is this variation of the squat, because I'm barely tapping into the quads here. I'm tapping into like core was given out, hips given out, et cetera. So I kept making the pin height higher and higher. At a certain point, I had it so fucking high that it looks ridiculous and it looks like I'm ego lifting. But really, it was simply just so that my quads can take the bear, uh, some get a bit more stimulus. But I did like six sets here, six sets all basically taken to failure, which is ridiculous. But anyway, what I'm going to be trying to do is I'm talking to a guy right now. He's got a leg press and a, and a uh, hack squat machine. And it's one of these old 1980s, like dirty looking fucking things. It doesn't even have the right diameter for the plates. It's got like a 28 millimeter diameter poles instead of 50 diameter poles for the Olympic plates. But it doesn't matter. What matters is that with the leg press and the, and the hack squat, I can take my legs to absolute mechanical failure without my core being the limiting factor or injury being the limiting factor. So I'm really trying to get this uh, these two machines bought from this guy. It's a hard task because one, my left bicep's torn, so I can't really help anyone move this fucking thing. I can lift it with one arm, but it's they're big, heavy pieces of equipment. I don't have a ute. I'm relying on a mate to potentially take me down there. And then um, hopefully between me, my mate, and the di- dude that owns it, we'll be able to lift it all onto his trailer if it fits. And that would be excellent because then I can train my legs the way I want to. And that's to failure. I don't really care too much about strength. And, you know, if you get a strong hack squat, a strong leg press, you'll have strong legs. I might not necessarily have the most functional kinetic chain. Uh, and that's, I'll still do these squats and all this rehabbing shit that I'm doing to try and get my back and everything like functional. But um, I'm more focusing on trying to get my quads fucking huge. So, and also when I get the surgery, I won't be able to really do squats anyway because it's just going to be too risky, but I could very least do leg press. So it'd be really good if I can get this leg press. Hopefully I can get it on board because they are just, when it, when it comes to high intensity training, leg press and hack squats are the best possible pieces of equipment uh, for legs. Like for, this is probably the, fuck it, this is the topic for the day. Let's talk about the best equipment for high intensity. I might make a video in the future about tier list equipment for high intensity because this is a very important topic. And that is, let's say, okay, for, for legs, what you want is a leg press as like the prime compound movement. And that way you can train the legs to failure without the lower back and core being the limiting factor. Then you move over to say a hack squat machine and that way the legs are pre-exhausted. And then you can sort of, the core is involved, but far less so you don't have to stabilize. And that way you can still take the, you know, you can do a squat variation to failure and then like a leg extension to isolate. Um, and then you want probably a leg curl machine for hamstrings to failure. Uh, if you can do deadlifts safely to failure, that's good too. And then you have calves. But as far as like quads and hamstrings and glutes go, those are like the main ones you want to do. I mean, the best glute movement overall, if I was to go through the best absolute glute, actually, you know, fuck that, <laughs> fuck this. I'll do a tier list. I think a tier list will make much more sense. This is going to be ridiculous. That's a great idea for a video tier list for diff- all the different uh, the best exercises for different body parts when it comes to high intensity contacts keep an eye out for that fucking video it's gonna be good fuck it 
So anyway, what the fuck was I saying? Leg press and hack squat machine. Hopefully I can get this. If I can get that, then I think I'll be all ready to go. I'm not going to be able to fit it in my gym. So what I'm going to have to do is like set up a tarp outside my house on my driveway and just have equipment out there. I'm going to have like a weird fucking gym where like my whole backyard just becomes a gym basically with tarps floating around. Um, but yeah, what I really want at this point is a leg press, a hack squat, a leg extension machine, a leg curl machine, a Dorian Yates Nautilus pullover machine. Um, and with all those, uh, with those machines, I'm pretty re ready to go. Everything else is absolutely easy to do. Maybe a chest press machine for incline. I'm not sure. There's plenty of machines I want, but I don't really have the space and I'm willing to buy, you know, kind of just have some leg press machine and, and hack squat machine outside. Too many machines would be ridiculous outside because I couldn't cover them all over in a tarp. I just don't have the space for it. But the thing is, as far as upper body goes, I'm pretty well fine. Like I'll be, I'll not be fine now that I've torn my bicep. But as far as hitting my upper body effectively, I don't really necessarily need any machines. The cable machine I have, the dumbbells and the barbells, totally suffice for training the upper body optimally. Uh, but my legs are severely being uh, limited in a high intensity context. Like if you do volume and you have functional squats, you can squat and get a decent degree of stimulation of the quads, then by all means, the squat can be fine. For me, I don't do volume. So that's not really an option. And two, I don't have function. It's all in the hip flexors and fucking like, I'm really just trying to keep my structural integrity uh, there. So now you can see me doing this weird, this super high angle squat. And the plan here is one, I can actually sort of feel my quads when I do it this high angle. Whereas at the lower angles, all I'm feeling is hip flexors and I'm fighting my knees from, you know, pronating in and shit. This one I can actually decently feel in the legs. Um, and then the idea is I'll just, as I keep rehabbing my legs and hip flexors and shit, is the way I'm gonna progressively overload this is this is 125 kilos. I will just simply go between eight to 12 reps. When I get to 12 reps, I'll lower the pin down one degree and then I'll go with the same weight again with lower reps and then just keep progressing up. And then rather than progressing weight, I'll just progress range of motion. And hopefully my hip flexors and my back and everything get functional enough over the next few months of diligently trying to rehab that shit while my bicep is torn um, to the point where I can, you know, get an ass to grass squat with the same weight that I started with today at a high angle. So that's the idea. Now I'm doing sort of a uh, static hold. So I don't like static holds. These are fucking brutal. Like try this shit at home. If you have a strap that you can squat into with max capacity, you just push as hard as you can. Make sure the strap is stable because you know I'm probably pushing down with a few hundred kilos of force here uh, at, at max capacity or maybe 150, 200 kilos, whatever the fuck it is. Um, and it's, it's, yeah, my legs are just, it's so hard. It's so brutal and your legs are just toasted by the end of it. So try these out if, if you don't have much to work with. I don't really like static holds because you can't actively progressively overload them because you can't ascertain, you know, whether you're pressing more or less the next time, but they're great to just kind of finish the quads off when I did a movement that otherwise was not really hitting the quads optimally in the squat for me. So this is kind of just a finisher or something of, of sorts just to try and get every fiber and motor neuron recruited no stone on turns and then yeah it's just one set these are fucking hard and i hate doing them and the more motivation to buy this leg press and hack squat so hopefully i can get this off this guy uh hopefully i can get it before thursday because one thursday i get my surgery and after that i won't be able to help them lift it at all because i'll be fucking totally fucked so hopefully i can get it before then if not it'll be a huge uh i'll be missing out big time and then what do I do after this? I do some like Nordic curls. So with Nordic curls, um, oh, you'll see me in doing it in a second. But the thing about Nordic curls is they're not as good as the laying hamstring curl machine that I've been doing because I can't force rep. Oh, well, no, actually that's wrong. I can force rep them, which is kind of what they're, one of the benefits of them. Uh, fucking, here we go. So I've been doing the laying hamstring curls, but problem with that is when I'm in a sling, I won't be able to do those. I probably won't even be able to do these for a few weeks in the sling. I probably won't train for a few weeks in general when I'm in the sling. I might do a few isometrics here and there, but I've got to be real careful. But I won't be able to do laying hamstring curled machines because it just, it just won't work when I'm in a sling. These, I could see myself being able to do in a sling. Now, these, I don't think they're as good per se, but they are good for really solidifying the hamstring tendon 
Now, they're very brutal in the hamstring tendons, and I'm fucking terrified of tearing more tendons right now. I'm very paranoid Paranoid after tearing my bicep that I'm going to tear some other shit, which I highly unlikely would just based off the fact I'm natural, not that strong, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm doing slow you know, eccentrics and concentrics to be really careful here, but um, I don't really tape these to total brutal failure. I get like to the point where I'm doing a grinding rep and then I stop. So I have like a rep in reserve or maybe half a rep in reserve sort of thing. So I do like three sets of the here. I'm doing really short rest intervals because I just fucking hate volume. I do, I, I've been doing a bit of volume lately because of the injury. And I don't know how the fuck people ever have done this shit. I don't know how I ever did it before. I rested like 40 seconds in between these sets and then I'm like, nah, I fucking just got to go again. And the sets got way harder every time I did them because I was resting so minimal. But ultimately, I just couldn't fucking bear sitting there for two minutes waiting in between sets. It's just so fucking, fucking boring, man. Like, I, I, I just can't fathom how people do volume. It's gay as fuck. And I'm so keen to get back into high intensity training because this is fucking boring, dude. It just is. I even let's just say devil's advocate high intensity doesn't work as well as volume it's fucking way more fun it's and what's more fun you're going to be doing more consistently more adherable and i think the brain follows the body if you're having fun you'll probably get better results anyway due to numerous factors so i'm i'm fucking really sick of this shit where i have to rest in between sets it's just so fucking gay man i don't mean to rant and i don't mean to shit on anyone that's doing volume that's watching this video but my goodness you guys have better patience than i do that's for sure um but yeah that's pretty much it i just did the squat i did the ice the isometric holds or the static holds and then i did the hamstrings and that was it um i tried doing manual resistance after this to try and do leg extensions i had tried to get my girlfriend to push down on my foot and do like fucking leg extensions with her she's not strong enough my quadriceps are actually pretty strong contrary to my pathetic squat so um yeah it just it's just not going to work <laughs> with the manual resistance stuff uh we try i tried a few things for my pecs uh, i had to like push down on my shoulder i sort of did like an internal rotation so that when i get the surgery i can still sort of do so i can like a manual resistance for the with the pecs so they don't atrophy too much that worked okay but if anything it gave her more of a workout than it gave me um so i don't know we'll, we'll see what me and her can do as far as trying to fucking do manual resistance after the surgery but i might just have to cop the atrophy for a little bit anyway see you guys for more piss and vinegar bye